Okay, well, let's uh, go on to our next subject that we need to cover, which is God's gifts to develop my loving self. So now, now we've examined our real self. We can see that our real self uh, requires a lot. We, you know, we're psychologically confronted by the concept of our real self. That's the reality. And we're confronted with regard emotionally. We're confronted with regard to truth. We we're confronted with regard to personality and nature. We we're confronted with regard to what our soulmate is going to look like, feel like, you know, act like, how much injury they might have or how much freedom of injury they might have. Some of you be even confronted with that. So, you know, it's a lot of areas of confrontation there. But, but all we, we needed to talk about your real self first before we can introduce to you how to develop your loving self. So developing your loving self is a choice. So that's number one thing to remember. It's a choice. Your real self is there whether you like it or not. <laughs> God created it. Whether you like it or not, and most of you don't like it at this stage, like, and certainly don't like the personality and nature of it, and you certainly don't like the fact that you're only half of it, right? And the other half is out there somewhere, and the other half is affecting you somehow, and you're affecting them somehow, and you're not even, you know, feeling about how. So you don't like that. But the reality is that that's how God's created you. And the sooner you get used to it, the better. <laughs> uh, that didn't go down well either. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though <laughs> I was saying to Mary at our, break, at our break I just said to her that you know something that makes me so happy makes you guys so miserable <laughs> it's just, you know, it's just uh, interesting the contrast of how we see everything you know perception wise but the reason why we did the development of the real self, because or, or the, who, who, who we really are, is because then it affects how we develop it, doesn't it? It makes sense that you're not going to be able to fully develop your loving self unless you understand, firstly, what your real self is, and then how to engage the process of development of it is, is the question. So, th so the first thing we wanted to do now is... And this is, a, again, another 30-hour topic in its own. Um, that is to suggest to you that God has given you gifts to develop your loving self. Now, some of those gifts came at the time of your creation. And some of those gifts came as a, at the time of your creation in terms of our potentials. Some of them are reality right now. Some of them are potentials only. And then some of them are gifts that you will receive if you engage the potentials. So in other words, further gifts that you get, but only if you engage the potentials that result from the previous gifts. And you would expect that in a way, wouldn't you? If, if God designed the soul to grow and change and transform, then obviously certain transformational things that occur must be dependent upon a number of things prior to that transformation in order to engage specific laws that would engage the actual transformational process. So it's very important we discuss this subject. So let's look firstly at the gifts God gave to us at the time of creation. So God's gifts at creation, at our creation. Now here we really want to focus uh, on four primary gifts. There are many more than four. So please don't feel these lists are exhaustive in any way, because they are not. But, but there are four primary gifts that if we can at least understand that these gifts have been given, we can begin to understand that we, can, we have the potential to develop them. So the first gift we've already alluded to in the previous discussion, and that was our personality and nature. Now, for many of you at the moment, you don't see that as a gift. You sort of have been using a lot of your time and energy and resources trying to destroy your 
God-given personality and nature and turn it into something that mummy and daddy wanted you to be. And in fact, for many of you, you sort of believe that it's better to be someone else other than this person, this real person that you really are. But this personality and nature is a beautiful gift given to you because it not only, there's a number of reasons why, but the first one is, I feel, that God has personally expressed herself by giving you a fragment of her personality and nature. And that's a, that's a wonderful thing when you think about it. It's like, it's like God exposes herself to the world by giving you a fragment of her personality and nature and, and desiring that you develop that personality and nature to the full so that you can express that part of God as well. Does that make sense? It's very, very clever design. <laughs> Keep saying that about God. Very clever, clever God. Okay, so this personality and nature, very essential thing for you to develop and, and honour inside of yourself. And, and as you can see from this uh, thing here, and particularly this global <coughs> terror, which is all about shutting down self, shutting down self, and for most of you, shutting down your real personality and nature is what you've been required to do. So most of you now are so distant from your real personality and nature that, that, that it's hard to feel many of you. Now some of you we can feel quite well in the sense of that's your personality and nature, and others of you it's like, where is your personality and nature? It's completely undeveloped. It's like it's still in, the, in an embryonic state. <coughs> yet to have any awareness about it or even allow its development. Does that make sense? So for some people you meet them and it's like their personality and nature is like a tiny little speck that, that you know you can sit with and, and the more sensitive you are emotionally, you have to sit with them for hours before you can even feel just one aspect of their personality and nature. And then for other people it's more like a, like, you know, a seed or something where you can... Yeah, I can just identify that as their personality and nature. And then for other people, it's a lot bigger, you know. You can feel their personality and nature being expressed frequently, frequently also with a lot of error in it, but you can at least feel <laughs> their nature and personality being engaged, you know. And, and it's a lot easier to be with a person like that than it is to be with a person like that. And you know why? Because you've got to work harder to be with a person who's not expressing their real personality and nature, to get to know them. You have to work harder. It's an expectation placed upon a person to work hard to know that person. Whereas when you're truly expressing your personality and nature fully, people around you don't have to work hard at all to know you or understand you. It's such a loving thing you could do to is express your personality and nature because no one around you has to try to know you. They know you just by being with you. Wonderful. It's wonderful. And of course, the bigger your personality and nature gets, the less they have to do to know you. Isn't that great? Yeah. Havana, you'd like to ask about. <coughs> um, so with you saying that um, each person, or I'm not sure if you're meaning... Each half or the whole soul? Well, at the moment we're looking at the half, aren't we? Yep. Obviously the personality and nature exists in the whole, yep. but, but for, for me to engage the other half of me, I have to first engage my personality and nature because that's going to attract the other half to yep. me. Yep. Okay, so if each person has a part of God's um, personality... Yeah, I'm talking about each whole soul. Okay, yep. Yep. All right. <laughs> So with us getting to know all the people or as many people in the world as we That's can, possible. we can actually learn about God. Ah. But if we're blocked to people like me and yeah. don't want to be around them, yeah. then we won't learn about God. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Interesting, hey. God's actually enga engaged it this way so that the more, we know, the more people we know, the more we know about God too. I had never thought of it like hmm. that before. But Interesting, cool. huh? Yeah, it's cool. Very cool. Like I said, there's a lot of very cool things about this God of yours. <laughs> uh, things that are really, really good. Mm. 
So, and can you understand this as well? You understand how the more you are you, the easier it is to know you. The less you're you, people have to search for you. And, and actually it's a very unloving thing to not be you because it actually stops, it actually forces people to search for who you are rather than to know who you are easily. You know, it's closing you down. So, Sandra. So, in this case, the larger the facade that we have, yep. the larger the suppression of the real self. So, therefore, people that are less in their facade have this larger feeling that you can get from them that they're in their real Don't self. Don't assume that, no. no. I've seen some people with a very big facade but are also engaging a fair portion of their personality and nature in that facade and so I can still feel more of them. Okay. Yeah, I can give you examples but I don't want to yeah, you know, make people uncomfortable in the audience. But there's actually people in the audience where you can feel, while they might be in facade, they're still more strongly in their personality and nature. So just to ask again, so someone who's like really as in suppressing expression of themselves the whole time, are yes. they the people that are really like the most like you can't really feel them because you're like what is behind this Correct. person and the person that's in facade and might be like angry all the time and really fiery you kind of is that possible is that how it no, translates no, no it's not like that at all it's when okay. they when they there's people who are have been allowed as a child to express part of their personality and nature in its sincere and truthful state but they also have a lot of addictions in other areas because mum and dad of course and they have a lot of addictions in other areas those people are easy to feel their nature than it is for a person who's suppressed their true nature. So a lot of the anger-based suppression, you know, anger is all about addiction not being met. You can't really feel a person under those circumstances. So don't confuse my statements. Sandra. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Driven by some of your personal desires there because you're angry, you're hoping that somebody can feel you still. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sneaky, sneaky. <laughs> sneaky questions. Um, okay, so the next really wonderful gift is obviously the gift of free will. 